So you don't have a car. No, I, but, I sold my car. So, but if you had a car, would you be able to pay the fees to be in that lot next door? Oh, hell no. Okay. What is the maximum you think you could pay? 40. 40? That's yeah. it. Yeah. Did you know that the people around here, you know, outside of downtown, they pay 20 a year? You're kidding. Why? Yeah, that's, that's what they pay. 20 a year to get a, what's called a hunting license. So you can like park your car and, or just, you have the right to basically go around your area looking for a space. And if you find but space we're not area, eligible for that. Why aren't we eligible for that? Because this is considered a business district. Uh -huh. And because we live next to businesses here on 2nd Street, mm -hmm. we can't apply for a hunting license. Yeah, and what do you think about that? you think it's fair? No, it's oh. not fair. Yeah. Hell no. I mean, I mean, we, we, we're residents too, you know? Yeah. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, ridiculous. yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. I'm glad. <laughs> well, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Yeah. These two buildings in downtown Santa Monica tell a very interesting story about how the stupidity and indifference of bureaucrats leads to an unjust government. The building on the left is an apartment building with 44 residents, most of them low-income people. Many of them have disabilities as well. The building on the right is a gigantic parking structure with 744 spaces. The vast majority of those spaces are empty every day and every night. The people on the left cannot afford the government fees to park in the building on the right. So every day and every night, the people on the left have to travel many blocks, even miles away, by foot or by bus, to go get their cars, use them, then repark in a different free spot and travel back home from where they parked very far away. There is no overnight street parking in downtown. You can only park overnight in lots that are very expensive and very empty. Residents outside downtown pay $20 a year for a quote-unquote hunting permit to park where they live. However, the government of Santa Monica in all its great wisdom has decided that downtown residents in the building on the left have to pay $160 a month, not a year, a month, to park in the lot next door. Or, if disabled, $65 a month to park there. So the disabled must pay 39 times more than the outside downtown permit of $20 a year. And the healthy must pay 96 times more. So, it is midnight on a Wednesday night, and there's 527 spaces available, and this is Ron, who lives in the building right next door to the lot. Now, Ron, you were living next door to this lot as this whole parking lot was being built, and you had to put up with the uh, stench of all the trash cans that they put outside your window, and the jackhammering, and all the noise that they made for a year. And now that this whole thing is built, you can't use it because it's too expensive. How's that for a slap in the face by the velvet glove of City Hall? It's a real pain in the neck. <laughs> I have to walk seven blocks from my car to the building I live with a walker or I will be ticketed for parking uh, in front of my own building. And the, the fact that the city will not allow people that have a handicapped placard to park for free, a resident inside the building, is a disgrace to being a resident of Santa Monica. It's an extreme financial hardship to have to pay monthly parking to park in the structure next to my own apartment building. This is the top of the parking structure. Again, there's 744 spaces here and about 20 residents with cars next door. This is a Wednesday night, and as you can see, there's plenty of spaces for those 20 residents. Now, why wouldn't any decent and rational person say, 
Let the residents that live on this block, especially the low income and handicapped people, park in this structure for the same $20 a year that the rest of the people in Santa Monica pay. Actually, it's not even the rest of Santa Monica. It's the people that don't have free parking already in their apartment buildings or houses or on the streets that they don't have to get a permit for. So most everybody outside downtown can either get their parking for free or for $20 a year. But hey, it's downtown. Downtown is a magical, wonderful place, right? Shouldn't you have to pay more? Well, some people prefer the quiet side of town, where it's less congested and more peaceful. Should they pay more because they think outside downtown is better? Given the fact that the price of a bus pass, or a marriage license, or a parking ticket is the same for anyone, whether they are making $100,000 a year or $20,000 a year, and given the fact that low-income people rarely get to choose where they live, any reasonable and ethical person would say, let downtown residents that don't already have free parking park for the same price that everybody else pays if space is available. Don't charge disabled people 39 times more and non-disabled people 96 times more to park next door. But the mayor and the city council of Santa Monica don't think that's a good idea because they say we have to recoup the tens of millions of dollars it costs to build this lot. So how are you gonna do that? You have to make people pay. But what's the point of that? If the fees are so high, they can't pay. You're not gonna recoup the money any faster. It doesn't make any sense, does it? And why would you recoup the money on the backs of your low income and disabled residents? Later in this video, I will share with you the completely nonsensical and illogical arguments a couple of city council members gave me about why residents in downtown should pay so much more. So here we are on the roof of the building next door to the big parking lot. And I'm on the roof with Mimi right here. Yeah. And Mimi, you parked on 17th Street because okay, that's where yeah. your uncle lives and that's, that's the, the best place, place that park. you can park. Yes. So you have to go all the way to 17th Street. We're on 2nd Street. So that's a lot yes, a of blocks yes, <laughs> to get your car every day so that you can go to work and do the things mm -hmm. that you need to do. Can you tell me about what the mayor said to you when you went to the grand opening of this parking lot? Uh, they say they have the final decision that everybody has to pay for the parking even though we are low-income people who lives in this building our income is less than 17,000 we cannot afford hundred ten dollars a month I told her that and she said uh, we can't do nothing about it so that's, that's it did you ask her why or did she give a reason why she couldn't do anything about it? I mean, how does the mayor expect you to pay for this? Uh, she doesn't talk about much about it. Uh, she said we, we we make a decision already, we can't change it. So you have to live with it. They uh, they can't change a decision that they made? Isn't that, their wa isn't that why they're running <laughs> the government? They're the ones yeah. that make the decisions and change decisions? Yep. And I told her uh, I can't afford to pay because I mean, if I pay for the parking $150, I have to cut for my food, for my electricity, uh, my phone. So she was kind of mad at me because I don't know why, but she's not answering a lot of questions. And uh, the interviewer from um, city, Santa Monica City um, uh, TV anchor, she stopped me to not to say anything so i don't know if she recorded it but there is a uh, who told you to not say anything and not 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 say anything but huh. she said uh, you have to leave the mayor alone and i told her see she's my mayor i have a right to talk to her and then my, the mayor walk away who who exactly was the one that said don't talk to the mayor she is i think she works from channel 16 city tv hmm. channel okay Interesting. City TV is the government community cable channel for the city of Santa Monica. 
It is funded, programmed, and operated by the city of Santa Monica. So I don't think we should be surprised if the mayor's own personal propaganda staff shuts Mimi down. After all, they can't have this poor woman's little parking problem cast a shadow over the grand opening of Structure 6. Right? This is the neighborhood the mayor lives in. The city clerk says she lives in an apartment building. If she doesn't have parking in her building already, she can easily get a $20 permit to park on the street. The mayor is not huffing it many blocks to her car every day, nor is she shelling out the 96 times more money that she told Mimi to pay. I have to catch the bus. Okay, so you gotta catch the bus to get your car. I could catch the bus and get my car, but I usually just walk. Wow, okay, well how many blocks to, to the VA from here? Uh, I'd say it's approximately two miles. Okay. And I'm trying to save money on bus passes, and I got a metro bus pass, and I got a big group bus pass. But no, it, it's a it, it's a bitch to try to you know if I want to go somewhere and visit my kids, my kids live in Whittier. Yeah. When I do get my car and I do want to go shopping, I have to catch the bus to go to the VA, pick up the car. Go wherever I'm going, shopping, wherever, visit my kids. Then I got to go back to the VA, no matter what time of the night it is, and catch the bus back. With your grocery bags? With my grocery bags, yes. You said about recouping the money. Downtown Santa Monica, they're already making money. After all these tourists and people spending money. This, to me, this is, see, I used to work in Hollywood. And... Hollywood is worse. They got more nightclubs and all that. These people are making money. They they, 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 they got some money, so so what do you mean recouping? Recouping what? You know, they're, they're making money. You got millionaires. I've talked to people from Africa, England, China. Now they didn't come they didn't come here broke, they come here with money. You know? They're they're promenades making money. They're, they're making money. These these hotels, they're not like. When I lost my mobile home, I went to I went to like two or three motels. They wanted ninety dollars. I was thinking, what ninety a week? Sure, ninety a day. So I can't afford that. And I want, you know, unless I hit the lottery, I'm not gonna hit the lottery. But no, as far as recouping their money, they're making money. Man. They're making. That's why. That's why you see them steam cleaning sidewalks, steam cleaning the alleys. Where are you gonna see that at? When I lived over there on Colorado at the mobile home park, they didn't steam clean no alleys. You know, it's like Beverly Hills, they gate their alleys. They probably steam clean those too, you know? <laughs> well, I'm a little out of breath walking up and down these stairs, but let's look at their argument here. They need to recoup the tens of millions of dollars it took to build this lot. That's perfectly reasonable. So, the question is, what impact would the 20 residents that have cars have on the recouping of the money that it took to build this lot? Well, if you take 20 spaces out of the 744, that is 2.6% of the spaces. 2.6%, okay? Now, I don't know how long it takes to recoup tens of millions of dollars for this lot, but, What's the big deal if it takes 2.6% longer to recoup it? It does really nothing to hurt the city, but it would be of great benefit to the low-income people next door and the handicapped people especially if they were able to park here. Now wouldn't it? By the way, look at that lot. That's also empty. That's a big empty lot over there. Not to mention this lot is empty. That lot is empty. But God forbid those handicapped people, those low income people park in any of these lots without paying a lot of money. God forbid. <laughs> wow. So anyway, I emailed uh, city council member Kevin McEwen, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, about this problem and he got back to me pretty fast. 
uh, within about a few hours, so A plus for that. But he said something that was very interesting. What he said was, there hypothetically would not be a problem giving the residents these uh, $20 permits. The problem is that there's no spaces. That's what he said. There's no spaces. He could do it, but there's no spaces. Well, I can't wait for Kevin to see this video because I'd like to hold him at his word that he hypothetically could do it. Can he actually do it if there's spaces? I really can't wait to find out his answer for that one. I don't know if he's going to get back to me as quick as he did <laughs> to answer that question. By the way, there's another empty parking lot over there. The other empty lot was right there. And now, here's another one. But, the handicapped people, let them eat cake. So this is Kevin's website. And he says, Santa Monica, people live here. Sometimes I worry we'll lose sight of that. Well, it's time to put on your worrying cap, buddy. Since, since I, I've had the original neuromusculoskeletal disability, which get, prevented me from, from walking on anything but crutches for a couple of years, and then 10 years later, uh, I had adult polio, which covered roughly the same areas, and, and I did absolutely could not stand and walk for a couple of years, and I fought really hard to try to get whatever rehabilitation was possible. Um, it was very di difficult, and, it, and the whole idea of living next to a, a, a parking garage was that I wouldn't, as I grew older, I wouldn't have that far to walk. And, in time, and from time to time, I do use a walker and, I'll, 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 and a cane, I'll, almost always a cane, but sometimes a walker and occasionally even a wheelchair, which I have upstairs in the, in the, in the bicycle storage room. Um, groceries I unload in front if I can find a space, if I can, if I can find a space. And then I, if I can't, I have to push them in a, in a, in a, in a, in a wagon which uh, isn't, isn't too convenient, particularly if I have liquids that are heavy. But I've been getting along that way, but not without pain and difficulty. And at the first, for quite a while, I had to, if I went out one day, I had to rest the next day because I had to build the strength up to, to, to do it, uh, to go again. And now I, I, I force myself because I have things that need to get done. But it's, it's not something that is, is sustainable over the long haul, really, really I don't think. I don't li like to think of the, of the future um, without a closer uh, parking uh, capability. For one, currently for the $65 permit that doesn't work here yet, if it ever will, um, for that, I would have to spend 7.2% of my annual income for the one space. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a lot when you consider all the other things you need. Well, like well it is. I mean, as I, as I told uh, the parking guy who, who, who made, the, made the announcement about that possibility of the 65, that, uh, um, you know, God and the church only want 10% and here these, you know, parking garage wants 72 I think that's getting a little... A uh, little, little too much for poor something, quite a bit too much. I mean, uh, well, I've had to wait uh, as long as an hour to, uh, to, for a space to open up instead of sitting either, either in the car idling or with the lights on and the engine turned off uh, to wait till somebody came along and to, to move. If they moved, then I, then I had a space, a fortunate long trip. The, the thing is, I think my heart is reasonably good, but we did have a resident here who, when they closed the, the old garage, he had to walk farther, and he did have 
a heart attack and die. And I don't, I don't think it helped him any to to have to go that that extra distance. Every day. What was his name? His name, his name was Luis. I'm not sure what, what his last name was, but it's Luis, and he, he was he was quite a bit younger than me, and um, I, I, he'd, he'd always parked in the same, more or less the same area that I did, and so that's. Uh, I, I didn't even know he'd gone, but but. Uh, yeah, Ron told me that. Uh, he was struggling um, with his condition, yeah. and then he had to walk a long distance to his car as well, and he had a very weak heart. Yeah, yeah, that was that's the least you Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, that, that that's that's the problem that you you know, if if you if you get set up where it's legal and it's okay to do one thing for for a period of years, like I don't know how long it was with Luis, but it might have been as long as with me. 17 years, then, you know, to all of a sudden be, be burdened with uh, a strain that your body either couldn't take in the first place or couldn't handle the abrupt change, then then it's, um, uh, it, it, it seems unnecessarily uh, uh, cr cruel. And and, uh, and pretty callous, I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is unthinking, uh, un, un, unanalytical. I, I don't know how much they knew about who was living nearby here, or or even if they cared. But they should should care. The 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 fact that Santa Monica has over year, years had some kind of policy toward people who are disabled, giving giving them a whether it's the the widow's might or the crumbs that fall from the table, it's, it's nevertheless, you, 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 you don't just suddenly rub that out without having a serious effect on people. And that's, that's what I, I felt quite bad about it when, when he went. Other people have been more or less Yeah, pushed. they, you used to be able to park in lot six for free with a handicap placard. That's right, it was. It was free for seven, 17, 17 years for me, and um, not now. You can't can't do it at all unless you want to pay the full price that people making a hundred grand a year pay, or fifty grand, whatever. That's fourteen dollars a day. Or since since we can't park overnight on the street, we can park on the street, but certainly not overnight. I, I think there is some kind of legal, sharp, sharp defini definition in practice here when they talk about access. But if you have access, but you can't park your car and, and, and eat and go to bed at night because you have to get up at, at before three and keep your car out away from the street until after five, it's not a very good place to park anyway for a lot, a lot of people, but there's no, no access where you can park and stay home, just stay, stay put and, and, and uh, Re, 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 rehabilitate yourself from whatever strains of the day. It's, yep. it's very, it's very unhealthy, and especially unhealthy for people who are already unhealthy. That's not, not, that's not the cycles that the body works on, and it, and it, and it is in addition to pushing someone uh, beyond their capabilities to to uh, to walk too far or to have a heart attack. It's it's also just undermining their basic health uh, function to to have to get up in the middle of the night to do that on a regular basis. It's really a, a form of torture. It's like, like, well, that's what it is. It's really kind of a form of gradual, gradual destruction of, of whatever health they still have. This is City Councilman Ted Winterer. He also got back to me pretty fast. He seems like a nice guy, but his arguments on why downtown residents should pay these ridiculous fees were quite specious and untenable. He said that comparing the $20 yearly permit to the $160 monthly fee was like comparing apples and oranges, and that, quote, these are two distinctly different commodities which merit different prices. Your proposal would provide for the same fee covered off-street parking with guaranteed availability most nights of the week, unquote. Basically, he's saying it would be too easy for the residents to get a space in that lot. Therefore, they should pay more, a lot more. The $20 street parking permit does not guarantee a spot, but the structure does. That's why residents should pay 39 to 96 times more.
This argument is wrong for two reasons. One, hunting permits do not increase in price in the zones where it is very easy to find spaces. So why charge residents in downtown more to park in a lot just because that's easy? There is also free and easy street parking in some areas where you don't even need a permit. So the next time you find an easy spot in Santa Monica, keep an eye out for Ted. Make sure he doesn't see you, because if he does, he might say, that was too easy. You're gonna have to pay a little something. And reason number two, the city eliminated overnight street parking in downtown. They made it so the only place you can park is in a very expensive lot with no reasonable alternative. Imagine if you were living in an area that was designated to become more commercialized and the city took away your street parking and your $20 hunting permit. And they said that now you only have a big fat parking lot to use and you will have to pay $160 a month to use it. Would you think that was fair? No, because you have no reasonable alternative. You remember Anthony? He makes an excellent point about the street sweepers. That's the reason there's no overnight parking. If the city is going to eliminate overnight street parking to keep the streets clean for visitors, then they should let the residents park in the lots. Right now, the city is accommodating visitors at the expense of its own residents. It's crushing them. Another argument Ted made was in the form of a question he posed to me. Quote, shouldn't we be recouping those taxpayer funds by charging market rates for parking, unquote? My answer to him in an email was, it's reasonable to charge market rates for seeing a movie in a theater because people can afford to go to the movies once in a while. It is completely unreasonable to expect that people pay that price every single day of their lives. And they don't because they don't need to see movies every day. However, residents need to park every single day and every single night. And for the city to charge market rates for a commodity that doesn't directly benefit them is absurd. The parking structure directly benefits visitors because it gives them a convenient visit. The parking structure directly benefits businesses because it brings them commerce. But what direct benefit does this structure give the downtown residents? It adds nothing to their lives. It just takes. It takes a lot of money from them. Visitors get to go home and park at night near their homes. The downtown residents don't. One girl living in the building next door to this lot moved out when the structure rates changed from $5 for overnight parking to $14. She just couldn't hack it. The structure wasn't adding to her pocketbook like it does a business on the promenade. It was just taking. The City Council of Santa Monica thinks it's right to treat its residents like visitors. The residents are not visitors. Residents are sacrificing for the visitors when it comes to parking. And with literally thousands of empty spaces in the nine public parking structures available to them, they shouldn't have to. That's what their taxes are for. Visitors from outside Santa Monica don't pay its city taxes every single day. So they pay more for a space, that's fine. But residents are paying city sales tax, cell phone, cable TV, etc. every day. Good old Ted also said, quote, I'm concerned that there are busy Friday and Saturday evenings when our downtown structures are full, which is not an appropriate time to provide discounted parking, unquote. Well, let me put your fears to rest, Ted. I don't want you to lose any sleep at night worrying if there's enough spaces on the weekends. Let's leave the sleepless nights to the downtown residents that have to move their cars in the middle of the night to avoid getting a ticket. So it is about 9.20 on a Friday night. And as you can see, there is 296 spaces on the upper level and 176 spaces on the bottom level. This is a very busy night, Friday night. It's a Saturday afternoon in Santa Monica. That's pretty cool. Anyway, uh, let's see how many spaces we have. 
230 in the afternoon, 174 in the upper levels, 156 in the bottom levels. And this is a Saturday night at 11.30 p.m. 365 up, 189 down. Parking in this situation is very, very difficult and uh, I can't afford to you know, be able to pay the full amount because I'm uh, living in a low income uh, situation and it would be nice if we uh, get some kind of uh, break from the city. So how do you deal with parking now? Where do you park your car now? Well, I park sometimes uh, on the street, uh, up on uh, uh, San Vicente. So how many blocks away is that from here? About uh, 10 blocks from here. So you have to go 10 blocks to get your car? Yes. Okay. And meanwhile, there's a parking striker right next door filled with empty spaces. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel, I mean, uh, come think of it, every uh, unit or every apartment in Santa Monica, they provide parking for their uh, uh, clients. But it makes me really... Uh, uh, makes me unhappy. Unhappy <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and it's so how do you get stressful, and, and I have to go up, up on the San Vicente to uh, be able to go to a 99 store to be able for you know that's why I get my my grocery. You know, and it's just very hard. It's very very hard. The 99 cent store, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's all the way up, uh, that's that's many blocks away from here. Yeah, so you so have to get 20, a car to go do 20, that. Yeah, it's 26 cents. It's not like you can just roll into Whole Foods and just buy whatever they have there. That's expensive now, stuff, right? Well, it would be nice for the city to allow us to, uh, you know, give us a little bit of break and so be able to, you know, to live in this uh, beautiful city of Santa Monica. All right, thanks a lot. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. You have to pay to your bike. Um, they're going to try, they're going to start making me pay for my motorcycle. It's terrible. It's been 20 years free parking for motorcycles, and now they're going to make me pay for that. Are we supposed to be paying for the new building that went up? Say what? It looks like we're paying for the new building that went up. Um, yeah, that's what city council member says. The city council member Ted Winterer says that they need to recoup the tens of millions of dollars it costs to build the lot. So. We should be paying for that. But he doesn't have to pay for parking any place. Yeah, probably not as much as this, that's for sure. I don't know if he parks in his home, but if, even if he parks in the street, it's only 20 bucks a year for him. He probably doesn't pay anything. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Whatever your parking situation is, Ted, along with the rest of city council, I doubt it is comparable to old Ron's, who every night has to shuffle up the street many blocks to go get his car, to get some groceries, then bring his car back, unload the car, drive it again seven to ten blocks away to park, then walk all the way back with that contraption. So when I said in the beginning that this story is about the stupidity of bureaucrats, I'm not saying that Pam, Ted, and Kevin are stupid. What I'm saying is this is a very stupid situation. I'm saying that it is stupid to treat residents like visitors. And I'm saying it is stupid to take away their street parking and then say, the only place you can park near where you live is in a very expensive lot. So what I propose is that the city of Santa Monica let people that live within one block from any of the nine empty lots have a right to park in those lots for the same $20 a year as the other residents that don't have on-site parking who have to pay to get their right to park on the street. The city owns the parking lots and the city owns the streets. There's really no difference. It won't take up much space in the lots. It's not gonna hurt anything and it's fair. The low income and disabled people are not asking to pay less than the $20 that everyone else has to pay. They are just asking to pay the same amount. That's it.